Welcome back to the course of Applied Transfer Modeling with Bizum. I'm once again Guido Cantelmo. Uh, and today we're going to talk about Network Design Part 2, Public Transport. Uh, and I'm going to try to keep the class relatively short because last time was a little bit longer. So we can uh, catch up. Let's see if that works. So without any further dis delay this time, uh, let's go through the lecture content. So today we are going to look how can we download uh, data about public transport? How can we edit the network, specifically uh, take into account the uh, public transport characteristics? And we will, well, I will show you one exercise that you can do as a sort of warm up if you want to play a little bit with Bizum and see what you learned so far. Uh, it is optional, but I think it's always a good exercise if you start trying uh, things on your own. Uh, short recap of the previous time. Uh, let's not forget that this is building on top of uh, network design part one. So in the previous class, we have seen how to design traffic zones, how to include uh, centroids, how to create connectors, how to create link nodes, how to edit them, and how to create characteristics at turns. So this is important because this part is something that uh, you are going to need if you want to work with public transport. So today we are just going to look exactly at public transport, but everything we said so far it is still valid. For instance, you will still need to guarantee a proper connection between links and nodes. You will still need to guarantee that links allow the proper transport mode, in this case, in this case public transport. Uh, you will need still to consider that you may have errors in the network when you create, uh, let's say, a public transport system that is not compatible with the network you create. So, as I said, we try this time to keep it a little bit shorter. So let's start from the beginning. Uh, public transport with the uh, public transportation data. Uh, there are multiple options. When it comes to Visum specifically, three of the most common options are either to use web sources. So one is directly OpenStreetMap. Whoever has tried to download some data from OpenStreetMap already realized that sometimes we do have public transport data as well, location of the public transport stations, for instance, or the bus stops. Uh, another source of information that is usually uh, actually better, it's Google Transit data. We will go to it. But the point is that Google Transit data is not just data from Google, it's a standard for public transportation data. And of course, there are other uh, ways of doing that. So one thing is to use the importer. So there are specific formats like the uh, Hafas file. You can directly import them. This is a standard as well. So if you have data that, that uh, match these standards, you can directly import them into Visum. And of course, you can import data from other softwares. So if you are familiar with softwares such as Transcad, Eme, if you have developed a public transport network in other usually commercial softwares, you can also import this data from uh, the old software directly into Visum. And of course, you can uh, use import and export from more or less open data file, which means if you have a CSV file, if you have access data, if you have uh, Excel data, you can directly import this type of information into Visum. This is not only for public transport, this is general. Uh, we are not going to see examples of all of this. Once again, this is just to show that there are some possibilities. Uh, today, we are going to only look at the GTFS data, which are the Google Transit data. So what is the GTFS data? Well. The general transit feed specification, GTFS, define a common format for public transportation schedule and associated geographic information. 
It is a format that is adopted in many cities uh, worldwide. And these partially include also Munich. Uh, actually, to the best of my knowledge, I couldn't find GTFS data for Munich specifically. I know there are there are some very old uh, there are some very old data that are available, but I couldn't find updated one. Uh, but I could find some data from MVV, so the one you can see in this picture, and we are gonna see how to download this one. Uh, so before going actually uh, ahead, actually no, I will show you first how to import this data. So if you want to download to import this data, first of all, of course, you have to download the data from this link. Actually, I will select. Um, da, 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 yeah, you have to select the data from the to select the data from this link. I will show you later. And then inside Visum, there is a specific option under import for GTFS data. And you can use this information for importing the data. So I will show you quickly how to do this. Okay. Uh, so, sorry, I have to navigate between multiple screens and sometimes I get lost. This is the website, you can just copy paste it and there are several versions. So the latest I can see is this one uh, from May 2019. When you download the data, as you can see here, you will download a, a, sort of a compressed file, in this case, a zip file. So at this point, you can just open your Visum network. So let's start from the same network as the last time. And from here, you can simply click on File, Import, GTFS data. Uh, you have to select the zip file, which is here. And for the rest, you should be good to go. Exactly. Now, um, I will shortly go ahead with the class because this could take a little bit longer. So while Visum is loading all, the, all of this stuff, let's go ahead with the, with the slides. So one of the problem that we have uh, with GTFS data is that once that we finish this procedure, we will load a network, but we will cancel the network that we are. We will delete the network that we already have it. So Vision will create a new file with a new network, which is the network that we can derive from the uh, GTFS data. But this network will not merge automatically with the network that you already have. So the network that we just opened, the network that we created in the previous class, will not be included in this file. So to do very often, you want to have both transport modes. You want to have both private and transport. So we have to find a way to merge now these two files. And one of the ways to do that is to save this file as network. So when you save the Visum file, you can save Visum in several different type of formats. One option is to use uh, network files. So if you use network files, then you can import the network file. You can import the network file directly into the Visum file. And you might have, let's say, 
public transport and private transport network. Of course, something a little bit awkward will happen. And that's mostly because here we are not really dealing with two uh, properly done networks. We are dealing with a network that we quickly edited from OpenStreetMap, cutting links here and there. We are dealing with a network which similarly it's just uh, downloading GTFS data and loading them into Vism without taking into account uh, without taking into account uh, consistencies or problems that we might have with Vism. Uh, what else? Well, the one I'm gonna show right now is exactly how to use network files to merge private transport and public transport network but you have also other options so for instance if you have two vism files and you want to import uh, the public transport network from one vism file to the other vism file you can also use the import function to import uh, let's say public transport characteristics from vism so it's under file import put supply from vism and this of course works very well but that works particularly well when you have two Vism files that are properly done and that are compatible. So, Vism finally finished to, let's, no, let's remove this one. As you can see here, Vism finished loading the Google Transit data. And this is pretty much how it looks like. So we have Munich in the center and we have a lot of details of what happened, what is happening around Munich, but we do not really, of course, have a lot of detail about what happened inside the city. And that's mostly because uh, this is um, this is the MVV uh, data and not the MVG data. So as we already uh, checked last time, we can quickly check the network characteristic. So if we go to network, network statistics we can see that the network is too large we cannot save it this way so we have to cut a little bit so we can use the same things that we have seen last time uh, and we can just decide to uh, remove the part of the network that we are not interested in so let's say we want just to keep this one for instance Let's cut whatever is here. So we can start er deleting all of this. Of course, now it's it will go. It's gonna give us a lot of errors, or at least that's what I would expect, because once again we are just we are just canceling stuff, uh, deleting stuff without drilling. Really knowing what we are uh, what are we deleting so i will not expect this network in the end to work we are just doing it as an example to see how to combine different network files so try to keep in mind this one let's also try to, uh, to uh, delete that one we can then delete all this part for this command you may remember it we saw it in the previous class how to select a certain subset of nodes oh okay let's say also to cancel all the nodes okay let's see if we can Okay, now we should be able to save. Something I probably didn't say last time is that there are two ways of selecting all the points. So one is to do this one. Let's remove one second the background. So one is to use to just select everything in the map. I don't want to cancel to have also these three, so we can remove them. And the other option is to click on this small icon here, this square with the gray area in the middle, and it's also going to select everything. So now we have our small subset of, of networks of, uh, of public transport lines in this area so what 
we can do it to save this version as no sorry we want to save as network okay and when we do save as network we can okay for instance say save it as uh, pt network it will save it as a net file which is more general we can decide this is the first difference what we want to keep or not from this network do we want to keep the nodes link times links only the coordinates and this is one of the options that I want of the function that you have to play, pay attention to because it's extremely useful. Very often you might not want to download to bring all of these uh, links with you. You might only want to keep, for instance, public transport information. Uh, you don't necessarily need to bring all of this information with you. Of course, you also can do that. That's completely up to you. Okay, so now we should have saved this file as a network. There we go. Now we come back to our network, the excerpt from the last time, and now we should be able to We should be able to import the public transportation network. That should just be file, open, network. We select our public transportation network file. We import everything we want to import. And that's exactly what we were expecting. So what we also have in the slide when you go looking at it, and that's normal that we have some errors here. What happened is that you, we have two networks that are not compatible. And somehow VZoom tried to, um, uh, to connect the two networks. And of course, it didn't do it that well. And this is why you always, you always have to pay attention to just not to have good data. If you have maybe good GTFS data, this transformation is not going to be that good. Here we are going to, we are mixing, as I mentioned, two files who are basically bad by default. So of course it's going to work quite bad. Uh, but in terms of technique, this is how you can import data from one file to the other. The other option, as I mentioned before, is to use directly file, import, uh, what is it? Public transport to supply from Visum. So if you have a different, two different Visum files, and in one you have been working only on the uh, on the private transport, and in the other one you have been working only on the public transport, this is another way to import files from one data to the other one, which works pretty well, I will say. So. Let's go back to the class. As I mentioned, I would like to try not to go too long, to take too long this time. So let's go to editing the Visum, uh, the network in Visum. So what we have seen so far was just was just how to do very basic uh, import file uh, importing files, and in this case, as we've seen. The, the files that we've been importing are also uh, in quite bad shape. So what happens is that you need, you need to do some editing on top of it. Uh, so this is what we are going to see how now here, which is, OK, what if you want to actually do a good public transportation model, public transport model in Visum? Well, you can even do it by, by starting from zero. Or of course, you can modify the one that you already imported to make it consistent. So first of all, how does public transport work in Visum? Uh, first of all, we are not going to work with the files that we've been working until now. As I mentioned, those are just uh, downloading data from OpenStreetMap and showing a little bit how you can 
merge different files, but as you have seen, they are not really consistent. So we will work on a different file, which is the uh, model.ver. It's provided together with the slides and is a network where actually everything is consistent. So you can do a little bit, uh, something a little bit better than just importing and exporting data. When it comes to public transport, we mainly have to divide the system in two. So we have the stops and we have the lines. Stops is actually where the uh, bus is stopping to, uh, well, to taking passengers. And actually in Visum, we model it with three different objects. So one is the bus stop. The bus stop is a general bus stop, like platform A at Hauptbahnhof, for instance. Uh, stop point is, uh, is basically when different platform or different stops uh, are clustered together. So we might have that if we have different platform in one specific uh, bus stop, then we will use stop points to represent that we have different lines stopping in the same place. And finally, we have stop areas, which is walking distance between those two stops. So if you want, for instance, to uh, get out in Mariensplatz from the uh, U-Bahn and go to the S-Bahn, you might model the two as two different stops and put a walking distance in the meantime. So this is from the side of the stops. So we have the bus stop per se, we have the bus, the stop point, when we have several bus stops which are grouped together, and we have stop areas, which is walking distance that connect different stops or different points. From the side of the line, we only have basically the, the, the route. We have just the, the route and the timetable. So we have to say, okay, where, uh, uh, which stops are covered by each line, which route is taking each line, and what is, well, at what time they are stopping in each bus stop. And we are gonna see how to create all of these elements in, uh, in Visum. So let's start from the first part. So let's say that we want to create this new line in red, and let's start creating stops, routes, and timetable. Sorry. So the first thing that you need to do, here there are the instructions, we will show it again on the video, but the first thing that you have to do is to create stops. So to create a stop, you need to select stop point as written in the slide, stay in insert mode, and then you will create uh, a series of stops. Every time that you create a stop point, also, a bus stop and a um, stop area will automatically be created. So by default, you will have that they all collapse in the same object. And then you can edit this object in order to create uh, more uh, elaborated scenarios that you might want to represent. When it comes to uh, create the bus line, things are a little bit co more complicated. So I will show it, but basically we have to do two different things. Of course, we have to go in lines. We have to create, to uh, insert a new line. And then first we have to create a new line. For instance, we call it new bus line, but could be uh, line 82, for instance, whatever number. And then we will have to create the route. Uh, what is the route? Well, the route is, okay, bus 82 is, uh, go, is having this route when it goes from terminal A to terminal B, and is having this route, which could be the same, could be different, when it goes from terminal B to terminal A. Another thing that we have to be careful is that when we will create at the beginning the, uh, the route, uh, well, Visum will basically calculate the shortest path and will tell you, well, if these are the two terminals, if this is the first and the last stop, just take the shortest path. Of course, you might not 
want the shortest path, you might want to have a different path because uh, your public transport line should cover a certain number of, uh, of stops, a certain area of the city eventually. So you might need manually, and exactly this is described here, but I will do it again. Uh, so what will happen here is that you need to tell to Visum that it has to stop in uh, in certain points. So in this case, for instance, you can see that uh, in red you have the actual route of the bus. All these small numbers represent the nodes that um, the, the the public transport uh, uh, route is covering is passing through. And these magenta nodes are the nodes that we, that we fixed. So we told Visum the net, you can do whatever you want here, whatever you want here, and whatever you want here, but you have to, to pass through these four nodes. You have to pass through this node, you have to, to pass through this node, 490, you have to pass through node 242, and you have to pass this, uh, well, to arrive to the final, uh, to the final node, which is also the terminal. And once that you have done this for one of the two lines, of the two lines, you you need to do it for the other one as well. So you can just either do the same and create a completely different route for the opposite direction, or you can just uh, copy the route for the opposite direction, which is what we are doing here. We create the opposite direction by just saying. Um, yeah, create opposite direction. And by default, it will also uh, it will also take the same route. The next phase is how to create a timetable, but I will first show you how to create uh, the route and the stops until this point. So we can move now to model, which is the good network, the one with, uh, well, with good uh, infrastructure. And uh, here we already have consistency in terms of turns, in terms of capacity, in terms of characteristics of the networks. We already have traffic analysis zones. We already have connectors. So this is a, a very well done network and we can try to do something a little bit better than just uh, trying to merge files that have been downloaded by the internet. So first of all, as I already mentioned multiple times, we want to remove, I want to remove zones and connectors from the background because I like it better. Then the second thing, as I said before, we want to create a network in the south of the city. So to create a network on the south of the city, the first thing that I need to do is to create a stop points. So I go on stop points, insert mode, and I start creating the first stop, the second bus stop. Uh, they are not probably exactly the same as on the slides, but that's not really important at this point. We want another stop here, one here, because why not on a main road? One on this intersection, one in this neighbor, and the terminal stop over here. Right? Great. So let's go one second in edit mode. As I mentioned before, every time that we create a stop point, we are actually creating stop points, stop areas, and stops. So just to show you, let's deactivate the uh, switch off the graphic layer for stop point for stop area and for stops. For stop is already off. So as you see here, is where, I, where we created the stop points, 
And when I activate this, the, the graphic layer for the stop points, of course, I can see them here as much as here. However, I can also see the stop area for each of them. I can also see the stops. So every time that we create stop points, we create automatically and by default stop areas and stop point, and they are automatically associated. Once that we created our uh, our stops, we need now to create uh, the route. So we have to create a bus line that goes from this node over here to this node over here. So to create a new line, we have first of all to go on lines and go on insert. So when you go on lines, don't worry, it will automatically open you this tab. Just ignore it and click on insert mode. Now in insert mode, it will, you will open this new tab. So first of all, you want to create a new line. So as I mentioned before, new line, it means I want to create line number 1000. I don't care if it's going from uh, Marians Plus to Hautbahnhof or from Hautbahnhof to Freiman. I don't care about the, the, the route that is, staying, that is doing at this moment. I just say that I want to create a new route. So you have to be in lines, insert mode, line, and then you can create anywhere in, this, in the white space. Doesn't matter. You will open this window. So we have line 1000, for instance. We can create bus, light rail, rail, um, subway, tram, whatever. We stick to a bus line for now. OK. And as simple as that, we created uh, one line. Now we want to associate a route to this line. So we have to switch into line route. Now, pay attention. Of course, you don't have to switch all the time. But as usual, we are in lines, insert mode. So at this point, once again, you can create in any, you can click in any point in the white space and you will open a new window. So you want to select the line that you want to work with, in this case, the line 1000 that we just created, and you wanted to give a name to this uh, line. For instance, west east, because it's going from west to east, or whatever you want to call it. Also not this small here, uh, this small thing over here. You have up and down. This is referring to the fact that for line 1000, you can have basically two direction, up and down. So west, the uh, line 1000 west east is associated to one direction, which is up. You click on OK, and now you have to define uh, the, uh, the origin and the destination, first of all. So the first and the last stop of your new route. So the first stop is this one on the bottom. The second stop is the last stop is this one over here in the top. However, if you just click, uh, it's not going to work. Uh, what you have to do now is to actually uh, keep pressing the left bottom of your uh, of your mouse, uh, the left click, keep pressing. So you click here, you keep pressing with the left uh, click of your mouse and you will have this sort of line over here that you can drag around and as you can see here when I move it here it creates automatically a path connecting the origin so the uh, node 1790 I guess it is to whatever other node I'm selecting in the network so at this point I can just move it over here which is the network the the destination node Let's zoom just to be sure. It is exactly the last node that we want. So, OK. So now we have been, I guess, quite, quite, like, quite lucky this time. So uh, the route, the course of, the, of this line is actually following exactly our expectation. This is roughly what I wanted, what I had in mind. Why I can say that? Because it's is passing through all the bus stops, which is what uh, concerns me the most. But let's say for 
for any reason, the automatic uh, route generated by Visum was more looking something like that. Okay, this is clearly different from uh, what we had in mind. So what you can do is to click on the nodes that you want uh, to use. So for instance, if I want the model to pass from this, I can even drag it later, further down. And as you see, now it's not passing even for the first stop as that was passing before. So what you can do now is to just drag. So to do these this, uh, changes that I'm doing, it's very easy. You have to click on the route and drag it or click on one node and drag the route until roughly use the nodes that you want to use. So for instance, if I want now the, node, the, the route to pass again through this one, I can just click here and drag this route over here. Now I can also click here. Wait, I don't like it. We did something too difficult for Loom. Excellent. This node is traversed several times. We don't want this. Excellent. Okay. So now it's not passing several times through the same nodes. Here is doing something weird that we don't want to do it. But once again, we shouldn't worry about that. Let's worry about the first node. So if I want the route to pass through it, I, ca I can just click on this node and now the color of the node is different. What does it mean? It means that whatever I do, yeah, yeah, I know. It means that whatever I do now, this node is not moving anymore. And I can do something like that, let's see. And I can click on all the bus stops in my network. There we go. Now I click on all the bus stops in my network. So in in part in magenta, you can see the nodes that I clicked on. Otherwise, they are red. And in red, you can see all the uh, nodes I didn't click on. The nodes I have been clicking on, they are now fixed and they are all my stops. So I'm forcing the model to pass through. And now it doesn't matter if I move it. As you can see, there is no big difference because the, the model is forced to pass through these nodes. Even if I bring it over here, Visum will have some strange detour for which it will go back to the nodes that I fixed because I've been telling Visum that he has to pass through these nodes. So you can just click on OK at this point, and you have pretty much done with your uh, network, now we, with your route. But now we want to create the opposite direction. So we switch to edit mode. So we are still in lines, but now we click on edit mode. From edit mode, you can see that we have all our routes. So for instance, if I click on route 1000, you can see the route that we just created. So I can do just right click, uh, create opposite direction. Uh, we can change the name. So for instance, from east to west. OK. And as you can see, now we have that line 1000 if as two different routes from east to west, which is going from top to down, and from west to east, which is going from the bottom to the top. And that's pretty much it for creating, honestly, um, for creating the, the routes. Now we have created the bus stops, we have created the route, we only need to create the timetable. So to create the timetable, one second, let me switch to the slides. So to create the timetable table, we have to, well, 
here there are all the instructions. Once again, I will be showing all of these instructions manually. But the idea is that you always have to do it from... Um, so first of all, did I forget anything here? No. So to create a timetable, first of all, you have to create... Uh, to go in lines, edit mode, and then you have to edit uh, line routes. When you go in edit, you will have the possibility to create a timetable. So you will have a list of all the nodes that the route is crossing. And for each of this node, you can create a timetable. So as written in the slide very clearly, I don't like reading the slide too much, but okay. Here you have information about the, uh, the, the length of the link. Here you have the accumulate length, accumulated length, which means the total uh, length of the route. Uh, here you have the stop time and the run time, which for now are all zero. So if we want to modify this, we have to click on the, this small clock on the top. And from here, we will open this window. And from the uh, window, we can update this part of the, of the window, which is update run times. It will tell us how to calculate the running time from one stop to the other. And we will be able to update the dwell times. Uh, which means how much how much time do we have to spend at the stop to collect users. And once that we have done that one, as you can see here, the stop time and the run time will be different now. So you will actually have times different from zero. Now, after doing this, we still need to create uh, the timetable is not over. Why? Because we do have um, we do have some um, we do have the frequency of the service roughly. Actually, no, we do have the travel time of the route, but we don't know when the uh, service is, is scheduled. We know that it takes maybe 10 minutes to do the whole trip, but we don't know if uh, the first trip is at 6 o'clock or 6.30 or 9 or 12, whatever. So first of all, we want to be sure that uh, all the links are consistent in terms of behavior of, uh, uh, of characteristics for our public transport system. So to do that, we have just to take a small... Um, um, just to be sure that all the links are set on the fat on default values for uh, public transport for the uh, travel time with public transport and that's something i will show how to do later uh, but actually it's very simple you have to select links edit mode multi-edit uh, you will have in special functions the possibility to go for default values and you will have to say to select that for the travel time of public transport you want to use default to use just default values so the alternative is to use uh, some equations or some other models some different values that you can you come out with uh, in this specific case we don't want to so we just want to stick to default values to the default values forgot to put the full Windows mode. Uh, once that we have done that, we can just create the timetable. Uh, how do we do that? Well, we go in lines, edit mode, we select the bus line we want to create a timetable for, and we create a timetable. So once that we create, so how do we do that? Well, I will show it in the video, so it feels ridiculous to, put, to point that out in the slide. In case you're missing something, there is a description, but it's very simple. Once again, you have to select lines, you have to be selected in edit mode, and after the edit mode, you have to select the line you want to edit, timetable, 
timetable tabular. And in timetable tabular, you will open this new window, which is of course empty because you don't have a timetable for the new line you just created. So you want to create one. So you can click on this small icon on the top, which is create vehicle journey. And from create vehicle journey, you can say, okay, I want a regular service. I want the service to operate from 9 to 15, for instance. Uh, and I want the uh, and I want the service to have a frequency of 30 minutes. And once that you have done that one, that's it. You have your timetable. So let's see one second how to do this for the uh, let's see one second how to do this with our uh, with our software, shall we? So let me remove the slide, activate Visum. So as I mentioned before, we are already in the line uh, in the routes uh, uh, menu. But first of all, we want to go in link. We are, we want to stay in in edit mode, so we can do right click. Multi-edit, we'll open the multi-edit function. We discussed already this one last time. We can go in special function. So you open it in formula, but you want to switch to special functions. In this menu, you select default value. It says specify here the attributes of the links, which shall be assigned uh, by default to all links. You select T, PUT system, so that should be travel time, uh, uh, public transport system. You click on use default values, and that's it. So by doing this, we are sure that we are using the default values for all the links in the network. With that done, oh, sorry. With that done, we can switch to the links again, to the lines again, sorry. So we select lines, we are in edit mode, so by the, by automatically the uh, Visum will open this one. We select the line that we want to operate, so let's start with this one for instance. It's absolutely, the, I mean, it's absolutely the same, it's not the same of course, but you can select any line you want to do the, the journey. As you can see, there are vehicle journeys zero here. There are uh, there is no timetable for this um, for this uh, line yet. So we go on timetable. We select it first timetable and timetable tabular in this case. As mentioned before, we do open this window which is completely empty at the moment. We do, we go in this uh, uh, in this icon over here. Create vehicle journey. We switch to the regular service tab, okay? Create regular service. And at this point, we can specify the headway start. So as most public transport services, I would say we can start at six o'clock in the morning and maybe we can run up to midnight. We can say that is a 10 minutes services. So Every 10 minutes, we have our uh, our service. OK. And as you can see now, it created, uh, it gave us a lot of information. Just to have an intuitive uh, way here, you can say that, you can see here that it created a series of, uh, of lines, actually. We forget some, we forgot something. I'm going to go there immediately. Uh, as you can see, it created the service at 6 o'clock, and then at 6.10, and then at 6.20. Uh, the only problem is that I forgot now to create the uh, other characteristics of the line. So we did not specify that uh, there is a certain travel time on the links, right? Is it, it is in the slide. I forgot to do it, and that's why now you have that the, the arrival time at each stop is the same. Why? Because the travel time is zero. So now we do have a service. We say that it starts from six, 
it finish at midnight. We have one bus each 10 minutes, but we don't have the travel time from one stop to the other. So we have to do, we have to deal with that. So we can close the, this window. Should be absolutely fine. There is not uh, necessarily one uh, order to do one before the other one. Not in this case, at least. So we can go again in line, line routes. We click on edit, sorry. Maybe that was too fast. So we are in lines, edit mode. We select once again the same uh, line we want to work with. Right click, edit. And as I mentioned, we arrive in this, uh, uh, in this nice um, window over here. So what do we see? On the left, you have the, the length, as we said before. How long is the, how was the distance between one stop and the other one? And here you have the cumulative of the lengths. So uh, how many kilometers you are traveling from the first stop until the last one? And here we have that the travel time is kind of zero for everything, which is not what we want. So we have to change this. As written in the slide, as mentioned, we can click to, on this small clock on the top. Set new times for current time profile. So we click on here. And this first part, once again, is the link travel time. How much time is going to spend, uh, is going to spend our bus on the link. Uh, we can just say that this is from the link runtime. That's it. So it's based on the length of the link. We want, of course, to have dwell times. We can put it constant, for instance, equal to two minutes here. It's a lot two minutes, but that's fine. OK. And as you can see now, now we do have a runtime. And now we do have that the arrival time. And let me move a little bit this one. That the arrival time and the departure time is different. So once again, what, are, what is the difference between the timetable that we are editing here and the timetable that we are editing there. So this timetable is just for any generic, uh, uh, um, let's say, service in our network. So here we are not specifying if this service is at 6 o'clock or it's at midnight or is at 12. We're just saying, in general, the travel time from one stop to the other is depends on the travel time on the link. And the dwell time, so the time that the bus is spending at the bus stop, is two minutes. So from here we can define the general rule, the general rules that uh, that work for this specific uh, uh, bus line. Let's close it. When I go to timetable, timetable tabular. From here we can see uh, when is the uh, well, let's say the initial the, the the beginning of the service and the end of the service and as you can see here now the times are quite different so we have now that it starts at six and here is not all zero here it's 15 minutes in total the time from the first stop to the last stop and then the second service starts at 6 10 and so on. before it was all zero if you remember so let's do the same thing just how to, to be a little bit clear as an exercise for the other line. So we did it for this line, but now we want to do it for this line too, right? So to include the to change the characteristics, first of all, we want to define the characteristics of the trip of the specific service. So right click, edit. First of all, as usual, we are in lines because we are changing lines. We are in edit mode. You can change lines and lines in line routes. We are changing the routes at the moment. You select the one you want to change, right click and edit. So as you can see, you have certain characteristics, which are physical characteristics of the infrastructure, but you have the, the travel time at the moment is basically zero and the dwell time is zero. There is no difference between arrival and departure time at the first stop, at the second stop or at the last stop. So to specify how the travel time and the dwell time change, we have to click now on 
set new times for current time profile. Update runtime, we can just take it from the link runtime. Update dwell time, we can put it constant and equal to two, and equal to two minutes. And now it's changed. Now it's not anymore um, everything zero. The total travel time is 15 minutes. As you can see, if you start at zero, zero, you arrive in 15 minutes at the last stop. And this is true for any generic service. We can close this window, go again in line, edit, line routes. We select the same route and we go for timetable this time. So we create a timetable tabular. It is empty. We select create vehicle journey. We click on regular service. Create a regular service. Again, we want it to start at 6 o'clock in the morning. We want to finish at midnight. And we want to, I don't remember the service in the other one. We say 10 minutes, let's say 10 minutes. So we have one bus every 10 minutes. And as you, as you can see, now we have that the service is running at 6, at 6.10, at 6.20. And you can see that uh, at the, the uh, stop 359, you have one bus at 603, one bus at 613, and so on. And that's pretty much it for creating, um, uh, for, cre for creating let's say, uh, public transport uh, uh, routes and public, uh, public transport stops in Visu. So let me move back to the slides. So that was it for today. I think I managed to keep the class below one hour this time. There was also less content, I think. Uh, if you want, but I think this is optional because next week you will have um, a tutorial on this. But if you want to try something new, you can do the following exercise. So uh, this is the network that we, we gave you. What you can try to do to see if you uh, are capable of implementing traffic analysis zones, if you are capable of using connectors, if you are able to create public transport lines, what you can do is to try to do some modification. So here there are some suggestions, creating external zones, oh, sorry. Um, here there are some suggestions. So you can, you can create external zones, so this, uh, green dots, you can create an, a new internal zone that it doesn't exist. You can try to include a motorway. Uh, you can try to include a new primary road, uh, urban roads, of course, play with the connectors. So pretty much everything that we have been seeing until now. Again, this is optional. Uh, if you do all of these changes, I assume that uh, your Visum license might not be able to handle the network. Uh, so maybe you can just select some of these and see if you're actually capable of, of adding some of these elements or if it doesn't work. And to see if you have been doing well or not, you can use the network check. Because except for some minor details with the fares of the transport system, I think this network should come without error, so you should be able to use network check to see if whatever changes you try to do are well done or not. And with this last comment, this is it for the class of today. Uh, next week, as I mentioned, we will do we will have a live class in Zoom. And we will give you um, some exercises to do with Bizum. So trying to use some of the, uh, of the elements that we have been discussing over these uh, 
two weeks, you will be asked to implement them in Visum. But during this class, you are also welcome to ask us to show something that is not fully clear or uh, whatever question doubt you have on Visum. That's something we can discuss next week. And that's it on my side. As usual, for questions, I'm available on, uh, uh, well, by email mostly. Stay safe and have a, rest of, have a nice rest of the day.